I have good news and bad news, girls. The good news is your dates are here. The bad news is they're dead. Thrill me. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's doing well out there. And today we're going to talk about Night of the Creeps. Yes, this movie came out August 22nd of 1986. Had a budget of $5 million, but sadly upon release it got buried by the studio and only made $591,000. And it's a shame because this movie is an extremely fun sci-fi horror film. And this movie was written and directed by Fred Decker. This is Fred Decker's first film. The next year he would do The Monster Squad. It was released in 87. And there's a call back to the monster, a shout out to the Monster Squad in this film, even before he made that film. And in this film, we have Jason Lively as Chris. We have Steve Marshall as JC, or John Carpenter. Um, they are best friends. They go to this university called Corman University, which is at, obviously a shout out to Roger Corman. The great Tom Atkins plays Detective Ray Cameron. Shout out to James Cameron. Jill Whitlow plays Cynthia. She is the love interest for Chris in this film. And um, they do pay a lot of homage to other horror directors. There's a, there's a cop named Detective Landis in this film, Sergeant Raimi. This is definitely a love letter to the genre. And there's a lot of, Fred Decker even said, he tried to put as many sci-fi and horror tropes in this film. And he does. You'll notice a lot of them in this film if you've ever seen it. And this movie, even the director's cut, is only like an hour and 20 minutes long. So it's a breeze to get through. And this film, in the beginning, we see this spaceship in outer space with these aliens. And this, these little slugs get, get released and they go to Earth. And we see the first part of this film, after the spaceship stuff, is shot in black and white. And we see these, this couple pull over in the side of the road and, and the guy goes into the woods to see what fell from the sky. And meanwhile, there's this serial killer on the loose we hear from this news report on the radio. And that's the beginning of our film. And that, that ties into later on more some backstory for Detective Cameron later on in the film. And they were introduced to JC and Chris and her best friends, like I said, going to this university, Corman University. And they're kind of like the geeky guys, but they're really good guys, you know. And they're trying to, well, Chris has this big crush on Cynthia, but she's dating one of the fraternity brothers at this one for a frat house, who's also a jock. And, um, but she's a sweet girl, very attractive, very girl next door-ish. And eventually, she, her and Chris start talking and uh, start up a, a, the beginning of a relationship, kind of. And they were introduced to, well, they, they, they want to join this fraternity because Chris thinks that's how he can get Cynthia to like him. So this fraternity puts them up to, they want them to get a dead body from the morgue and put it in front of this one um, fraternity house as a prank. And they go to this, the morgue, but there's this secret... Well, this locked off, cordoned off area that they happen to get into, and there's this dead body cryogenically frozen, which is the same guy from the beginning of the film, the black and white portion of this film. And he's holding a secret. Those slugs that we got introduced to on the spaceship in the beginning that fall to Earth have infested his body. He walks out because when they get into you, they go into your brain and incubate, but then you turn into a life like a brain, like a zombie from George Romero's films, and he starts walking around naked. And eventually the slugs come out and start inhabiting other people. And that's how we have our main problem in this film. Detective Cameron gets called. He's he's lives by himself and he's um, definitely, you know, a hard-nosed kind of detective. Although he has some great one-liners like Thrill Me. He says it five times during the film. Um, and some other great lines during the film. Tom Atkins is phenomenal in this film. Um, he's great. He has so many great lines, so many great scenes. And he's on the trail trying to figure out what's going on because people, weird stuff starts to happen around this campus. Um, there's weird sightings of these little slugs and people acting strange. And to fast forward through some things, I don't want to give everything away if you've never seen it. This is a spoiler review. Um, eventually, our guys have to fight off. Now, unfortunately, JC gets taken over by the slugs and he figures out how to kill them with heat. will kill them. So he leaves a recording even after, he's the only one through the whole film after he gets possessed by these or taken over by these slugs. He leaves a recording for Chris on how to defeat them while he's um, taken over by them. He's the only character in the whole film that is able to do that. And Chris finds JC's body in the basement next to the boiler and a bunch of dead slugs. So Ray Cameron teams up with Chris and they go and get a, a flamethrower and they go try to rescue Cynthia because from my comment in the beginning, the date that that line comes straight from the movie. Um, Tom Atkins says it. 
Ladies, I got good news and bad news. The good news is your dates are here. The bad news is already dead. So the last 20 minutes, last 15, 20 minutes is nothing but them trying to stop these slugs and these zombies from taking over this town and the world eventually. And at the end of the film, we think our heroes, Detective Cameron, ignites the, the sorority house on fire and blows it up to kill all these slugs and himself sacrifices himself to save everybody else but at the end there's a twist and we see detective cameron's body all burnt up walking down the street and that's the end of night of the creeps this is just a fun sci-fi horror film um all the sci-fi tropes from the 50s and 60s are in this film you could see them um and they're definitely having fun fred decker is having a great time with just showing those tropes in this film and our characters are following along, along the same lines as those old school sci-fi films but then there's the horror moments where there's gore and there, there's some very interesting makeup effects, some really cool makeup effects in this film. As a matter of fact, Howard Berger from KMB Effects worked on this film. This is before they had KMB Effects. And he actually plays one of the zombies in this film. So does Alex Kurtzman, who was also part of KMB Effects eventually. Um, it's just a good time with practical effects. Um, some the acting is not, I don't know if it was on purpose, some of the acting's not the greatest. Tom Atkins is awesome. The acting's okay. I mean, Jason Lively's a likable guy, and his interactions with Steve Marshall, they have really good chemistry together. And Jill Whitlow as Cynthia, her chemistry with Chris and JC is really good, too. Um, the acting's just not the greatest, and I don't know if that was a style choice because they were going after that 50s sci-fi kind of cheesy heart, like movie kind of thing, or, or what. But I think Fred Decker does a nice job with the directing for his first film. He keeps the pace moving. I know he got screwed by the studio before the release because it was a disastrous test screening. They actually gave him a little bit of money. He went back and did some reshoots. He added a scene. Um, the garden shed scene is an add-on later. They shot later on. Just to pump up the ending a little bit more. Give a little bit more action. Um, and then they kind of buried the film. They released it regionally across the country. I think it only ever got released in 70 theaters. That's why it only made $591,000. Um, it never got the wide release they were hoping for. But uh, a little trivia for you, the graffiti on the wall, there's a part where JC's trapped in the bathroom by the slugs, he's trying to figure out a way to get out, because he's a handicap, he has, you know, he always walks with two, um, I don't know what you would call them, two walkers, and uh, on the wall, on the wall there's graffiti that says, um, Go Monster Squad, which is a shout out to Fred Decker's next film, which came out the year after this, um, the movie, there's a house mother for the sorority house, and she's sitting in her little cottage out back, and they find out that the body of the serial killer, the being of the film that we said got released, Detective Cameron was on that night. No, he wasn't a detective then, he was a rookie. Was on that night, and that was his ex-girlfriend in the car that gets killed by the serial killer. That ties into Detective Cameron's um, backstory a little bit. And he gets reanimated by the, the slugs and comes up and kills the house mother. But when she's sitting there watching TV, she's watching Plan 9 from Outer Space, actually, is what's playing on the TV. Um, other than that, I think that's it for trivia. This is actually a really fun sci-fi horror film. It's not meant to be taken too seriously, but you can just sit down. It's an easy watch. Like I said, even the director's cut, which is only a few minutes longer than the theatrical cut, is only like 88, 89 minutes long. It's an easy watch to get through. There's so many callbacks to other films, so many great one-liners. It's just a joy to sit through. I would give Night of the Creeps an 8.5 out of 10. If you've never seen this film, do yourself a favor, check it out. It's just a fun time at the movies. Yeah, eight and a half out of 10 for Night of the Creeps. Have you ever seen Night of the Creeps? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video, I greatly would appreciate that. I'll be back later in the week with another review. Until then, I'm just gonna say, bye.